This part of the test will measure your speaking ability. It will last around 20 to 30 minutes. You will answer four questions. The first question will be about a familiar topic. The other three will be about short conversations, lectures, and reading passages. You can read and hear the lectures and paragraphs only once. You will see the time available for preparing the responses as well as the time to give your response on the bottom side of the screen. You have to stay within those time limits. Speaking Task 1 You will be asked a question about a familiar topic. You will then have 15 seconds to prepare your response, and 45 seconds to speak. Some people prefer to wear fashionable clothes. However, others prefer to wear clothes that are comfortable for them. Which do you prefer and why? Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep. Speaking Task 2 You will read a short paragraph and then listen to a conversation between two people. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the conversation between two people. Why are they doing this to us? You're upset about volunteering. Yes, I am. I was able to pass one difficult course thanks to the volunteering I did last semester. I was really hoping that this option will still be available. I was expecting it. So you were doing it in order to help others? I mean, I wanted to help others, of course. The fact I was able to pass a difficult course thanks to the volunteering? That motivated me a lot. So then the students did abuse the system like the administration said. Yeah, we were. I know it helped a lot of my classmates. And do you think that the administration is wrong when they say that students will still come to volunteer? No, I don't think they're wrong. Even though it will not count towards my credit hours, I will still show up. It was a really rewarding experience. Good to know. What does the male student think about the volunteering? Prepare your response after the beep.
Start speaking after the beep. Speaking Task 3 You will read a short paragraph about an academic topic then listen to a lecture about it. You will have 50 seconds to read the paragraph. After, you will get a question about what you read and heard. You will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. You have 50 seconds to read. Start reading after the beep. Now listen to the lecture. Globalization has had a profound impact on almost every aspect of human life, including the world of art. We will look at how globalization has influenced art, both positively and negatively, in this lecture. Let us first consider the positive effects of globalization on art. One of the most significant advantages is the increased access to art from all over the world. The internet and other technological advances have made it easier to share and distribute art across borders. As a result, people are more exposed than ever before to a diverse range of artistic styles and traditions. This has not only broadened our understanding of different cultures, but it has also facilitated cross-cultural dialogue and understanding. Another advantage of globalization for artists is the increased opportunity to showcase their work on a global scale. Artists now have more platforms to display their work and reach a wider audience as more art fairs, exhibitions, and galleries open around the world. This has opened up new avenues for artists to gain recognition, establish a reputation, and advance their careers. To maximize the benefits of globalization on art, while minimizing the negative impacts, we must support artistic integrity and foster a greater understanding and appreciation of art from around the world. What are the positive impacts of globalization on art? Use points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep.
you will listen to a lecture about an academic topic. After, you will get a question about what you heard. You will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and then 60 seconds to give it. Now listen to the lecture. Today we'll talk about the hippocampus's role in memory. The hippocampus is a part of the brain that is located in the medial temporal lobe and is responsible for a variety of functions, such as memory formation and consolidation. Memory encoding is the process of converting data so that it can be stored in memory. This procedure consists of several stages, including sensory processing, attention, and consolidation. The hippocampus is especially important during the consolidation stage when it converts short-term memories into long-term memories. This process entails the strengthening of neural connections between different parts of the brain, allowing for easier retrieval of information in the future. According to research, the hippocampus is involved in the encoding of memories that are spatially or temporally related. When navigating through a new environment, for example, the hippocampus is activated as spatial information is encoded. Similarly, the hippocampus is activated when learning a new sequence of events because temporal information is encoded. Memory retrieval is the process of gaining access to previously stored memories. The hippocampus plays a role in this process as well, though it is more complex than in memory encoding. According to one theory, the hippocampus functions as a relational database allowing us to retrieve memories by connecting disparate pieces of information. Studies show that when we retrieve memories involving multiple pieces of information, such as a person's name, appearance, and occupation, the hippocampus is activated. According to the professor, in which brain processes is the hippocampus involved? Include points and examples from the lecture. Prepare your response after the beep. Start speaking after the beep.